At the Wikimedia Foundation, we support and collaborate with communities of volunteers who build and write the Wikipedias. That includes English, Wikipedia, and 300 other language wikis and 15 wiki projects. We work in the open and we work uh, open access, open collaboration, open attribution. We use human-centered design methods and learn from the humans that we work with and for in their context. And we integrate what we learn to design <coughs> solutions and addressing opportunities to move the mission forward. And we employ storytelling to share and collaborate, and we co-create with these communities. So today we're going to tell you a little bit about some of the things that we've learned, how we learned, and what we're doing about what we've learned. Just a little bit of it. <laughs> um, and, and about the margins that we see for our work. So everybody is a lot of people. And we needed to know more about those that weren't already communicating with us and connected with the foundation. Uh, we need to know about new readers, potential people who may not even know about Wikipedia. So it was apparent that we had to go to the people to learn from them in their context, just like you were saying, <laughs> and others have been saying, um, to visit them where they live and work. So we went to Mexico, we went to Nigeria, we went to India to ask and listen and observe and learn how people access the information they need for their lives, how they find it, how they gather that information, how they share it out, and what role Wikipedia might play, if any, in that effort. For example, we learned about people operating in the margins of access. So in this research, we see access as concerning both affordability, I can afford to get online, I can afford to download, and connectivity, and the resulting need for offline access to information as well. So about connectivity we observed things like heavy dependence on Wi-Fi for cost reduction, um, strategizing what to do in the internet in the time you can't afford or the time you have access to it, <coughs> prioritizing what to download as a factor of cost, <coughs> massive downloading while there is access to prepare for when there isn't access, and reducing the requirement to get online at all by bumping, sideloading, sharing content, that someone that I accessed online in an offline matter, manner. So whether that's fully offline or it's going from online to offline, we noticed a lot of that too. Um, so now on to Dan, who will talk about some surveys that we did and more about new readers. Great, thanks, Amy. Um, yeah, in addition to the on-the-ground research, which is really critical for understanding uh, situations that are not part of our own backgrounds. We've done a lot of work and research done with there. We also did something that gave us a lot of breadth, which was uh, conducting phone surveys. And these phone surveys are very large scale compared to most phone surveys. These are usually getting around 2,500 completed surveys. These are distributed geographically. We used voice surveys, IVR, in order to make sure that we could include as many people as possible. So this means that they didn't have to be on the internet, they didn't have to be technologically savvy, they may not even be literate, but they could participate in answering questions and questions that we needed to know around internet use, smartphone use, understanding uh, their behaviors around and knowledge about Wikipedia and these sort of things. So some of the results we found out from the phone survey tended to be around internet use. So you can see for the countries we surveyed, people who are, said they were not, did not use the internet, there's still quite a few of them. They tend to be <coughs> focused more in Middle East and in India. A lot more people on the internet when we get to the, uh, South America. Also, we asked about their capabilities of their phones, whether their phones could get on the internet, in other words, a smartphone. And again, we see there's still quite a few places where the phones are not capable of getting on the internet. So smartphone use is more widespread uh, the more you go toward um, so to the, the Americas. And then I think the other thing was cost. So you can see when we asked this question directly in Iraq, only 20% of people said that the cost of the internet did not inhibit their use of the internet. Many things we saw from the research indicated that people tend to really highly prioritize the time because it is so expensive. So they really have a very strict budget of places and times and how they would use the internet. In other words, 
it really discouraged discoverability and your average things we take for granted in terms of web surfing and things. So they've just went down to Facebook, WhatsApp, and maybe one or two other places. What we learned from the research, right, from the phone surveys and also the new readers' work in the on the ground, it comes down to some of the programs we're doing. And I think the main program that addresses costs is Wikipedia Zero, which we've been running for about five years. Offline efforts is a big effort that we're doing right now, is to understand and increase the capability of our products to work more on intermittent access and fully offline. And so there's a lot of new features and polish that we're putting in that have been the result of the research that Abby's done. And then we're working a lot with community to understand and partner to get um, more distribution of our offline efforts into the field. Okay, and from this, um, Maria, if you could talk about the marginalization around language. <coughs> Hi. So uh, in the last two minutes, uh, I'm going to talk about the I'm going to focus on the second margin we have identified for our work, which is languages, what we have learned, uh, how and what we are doing about it. To describe the problem, the problem has two sides. The first is difficulty in finding content in the local language, which in turn results in lack of resources to generate citations. Citations is a way of uh, generating good quality content on Wikipedia. The other uh, side of the problem is the difference between natural languages and macro languages or indigenous languages. So natural languages are English, Spanish, French, those are more structural languages which have rules and a uh, specific system. Micro languages are indigenous languages like Nahuatl, Quichua, Cheyenne, uh, are less structured and depend largely on oral tradition, which Wikipedia doesn't fully support. So, how we learned about this? Through surveys in countries where both English and non English is spoken, we learned that there is twice as much awareness of Wikipedia for English speakers versus non English speakers in Nigeria and India. And we also learned that more than 50% of internet users have difficulty finding content in their own language more than half the time. In addition to the phone surveys and the contextual research, there are also initiatives powered by community. Some exploratory research was done through a Wikimedia Foundation grant by uh, Global Voices uh, to understand how Wikimedia projects can serve as a platform to promote and support uh, indigenous, lang indigenous languages. And uh, through this we learned that <coughs> The main blocker is the reduced number of native speakers and that there need to be some changes regarding content policies for indigenous language version of Wikipedia. So what are we doing? There are two areas here, initiatives championed by Wikimedia Foundation and initiatives championed by different Wikimedia communities. I'm sorry I'm going so fast but I'm like a bit over time here. So uh, by the Wikimedia Foundation, um, we have the content translation tool, which to date has uh, enabled over 250,000 articles translated across languages. And this is what the interface looks like. The communities in terms have championed several initiatives, and these programs are more reactive and not inspired necessarily by contextual research, but are in response to a particular context and iterated later on. Uh, practice actually plays a really big role in learning in the Wikimedia movement. So the first program I wanted to share is Wikipedia for Refugees. Uh, this is a, a, a space where experienced Wikipedians uh, share the, their skills with refugees. They teach them how to edit Wikipedia. This is now being tested in Italy, coordinated by Camilla Boban, and in Austria by Mohsen Salek. These are some of our community members. There has been a language conference called Celtic Not. This was uh, hosted by Wikimedia UK. Conferences and meetups are important in our movement because program leaders have a chance to meet and share experiences about what works means in certain areas. And finally, the Refugee Facebook was a collaboration with Open Knowledge Germany. It was printed and distributed in Germany, Hungary, and Greece in 2015, and it had phrases like, I need to see a doctor uh, for refugees to move around in everyday life in their new home country. So I hope this was inspiring. We had to really narrow the focus. We, there's so much to share about the margins, but yes, that's all. Thank you.